The Bible declares that man should not live by bread alone. And we do thank and praise God how he has led us through 2020 into 2021 with our pastor and founder here at Words of Life and Ministry of the Apostolic Faith. We thank and praise God for you tuning in on this morning. We ask that right now in the name of Jesus that you let your friends know that the word is about to come forth. Here to bring forth the word of this morning is none other than our pastor and founder of the Words of Life and Ministry of the Apostolic Faith is none other than Pastor Darian McKinnon. Let us receive him by saying amen. 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 Pastor McKinnon. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise God, everybody. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. What an awesome God that we serve on yes. this day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. It's a different year, but it's the same God. Yes, Lord. He's still almighty. Thank you, God. He still deserves all the praise. Yes. He still deserves all the glory and the honor. Hallelujah. What an awesome God we serve. Thank God for my wife. Hallelujah. First Lady McKinnon. Thank God for you all coming out. Hallelujah. And I thank God for the viewers that are viewing us through the media. Let us go straight way into the word. Hallelujah. God has a word for us on this day. Thank you, Jesus. Let us go to Acts chapter 22. Hallelujah. Acts chapter 22. Thank you, Jesus. Acts 22. We're going to start with uh, verse 6. And I'm going to read for you here. And it came to pass that as I made my journey and was come nigh unto Damascus, Damascus about noon suddenly there shone from heaven a great light round about me and I fell unto the ground and heard a voice saying unto me Saul Saul why persecutest thou me and I answered who art thou Lord and he said unto me I am Jesus of Nazareth whom thou persecutest and they that were with him saw indeed the light and were afraid, but they heard not the voice of him that spake to me. And I said, what shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said unto me, arise and go into Damascus, and there it shall be told thee all things which are appointed for thee to do. And when I could not see for the glory of that light, being led by the hand of them that was with me, I came into Damascus. And the one Ananias, a devoted, a devout man, according to the law, having a good report of all Jews which dwelt there, came unto me and stood and said unto me, Brother Saul, receive thy sight. And the same hour I looked up upon him. And he said, the God of our fathers has chosen thee, that thou shouldest know his will and see that just one and shouldest hear the voice of his mouth. For thou shalt be his witness unto all men of what thou hast seen and heard. And now, why tearest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, touch each and every heart right now, Father. Remove God, hallelujah, mm, anything that hinders God from the hearing of this word. Remove God, anything that hinders the seeing God of this word, God, in the name of Jesus. Remove anything that hinders people from calling out on your name. God, we thank you and we praise you. Give me clarity of speech, thought, in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. The title of the message is, Why Terrorist Thou? 
why tarriest thou? Hallelujah. You may be seated. Now, I must take a little time to bring you up to speed, so to say. Uh, let you know what's going on in this text with Paul and why he's speaking this way or in this manner. Uh, before Paul was called Paul, he was called Saul. And as Saul, and as Saul, he was a murderer. As a matter of fact, he was a murderer of the Christian people, those that believed in Jesus. Hallelujah. And he did all type of evil things to Christians, bounding them and throwing them in jail, killing them. As a matter of fact, he stood by while Stephen was killed, egging them on. Hallelujah. Now, Acts 22 says, verse 3, I am verily a man, this is Paul, and he, he's talking about himself. He, he, he's doing a, a, a recount of, of himself. He said, I'm verily a man, which am a Jew, born in Tyrus, a city of Celia, yet brought up in this city at the feet of Gamal, and taught according to the perfect manner of the law of the fathers, and was zealous toward God, as ye all are on this day. So the word he was saying that, man, I've been taught and, and, and I've been I've been schooled on all the ways of the Lord. And uh, I was zealous. I, I was eager in what I was doing. And I believed in what I was doing when I was killing Christian people uh, for the sake of the Jews. Uh, that, that, that saying that Jesus is the way. So anybody that said Jesus was the way, he was locking them up or either killing them. Now, in other words about this thing, what I'm talking about is that Paul was sincere in what he believed in. But you know what? He was sincerely wrong. And we can be that way. There are so many of us in that state today. We're sincere about what we believe. Like Paul or Saul at the time, I'm going to be using them names interchangeably. So forgive me. Like Paul or Saul, he was sincere in what he believed, but he was sincerely wrong. And there's a lot of us like that on this, this day, this very day. We believe what we believe, and we're sincere about it, but we're sincerely wrong because it don't line up with the word of God. Amen? Amen. Verse 4 goes on to say, and I persecuted this way unto the death. Yeah. Binding and delivering them into prison, both men and women. Hallelujah. This same thing is happening today. Maybe not physically, uh, especially, you know, in the United States. They ain't binding us up, but in other countries, they're binding people up that believe in Jesus. Hallelujah. But here, we're being bound by Satan. Hallelujah. Because we allow Satan to come in and take control of our mind, our thought pattern, our habits, hallelujah, our action. He binds us up, hallelujah, so that we won't serve God, or so that we won't fully do the things that we need to do to serve God, amen? He persecutes us daily like that, hallelujah, if you allow him. Verse 5 goes on to say, And as also the high priest doeth bear me witness, and all the estate of the elders, from whom also I received letters unto the brethren, and went to Damascus to bring them which were there bound unto Jerusalem for punishment. The Jewish leaders praised and supported Saul for doing all these evil things to the Christians. In, uh, in Acts 9, we read about Saul having his Damascus road experience. This is the, and, and 9 is the actual uh, happening of where Saul had his Damascus road experience. Over in chapter 22, he's recalling it and telling it to some people. Amen? So, after he had had his Damascus road experience where he he met Jesus, and these, Jesus knocked him off his horse, hallelujah, with that light from heaven. He began to teach and preach 
about Jesus being the way to salvation. As Paul was teaching and preaching about Jesus being the way, hallelujah, to salvation or the way to heaven or the way to God, the Jewish leaders, they didn't appreciate that. They didn't appreciate Paul changing his mind, changing his beliefs. Hallelujah. They didn't appreciate him finding out the real way, hallelujah, of salvation. So Paul was arrested, hallelujah, because the Jewish leaders, they, they, they got him in trouble with the Romans. Hallelujah. So the Romans arrested him, but it was due to the fault of the Jewish leaders. Hallelujah. They said he was causing problems. Hallelujah. He was causing problems. Now this brings us to the point that we are, are preaching about or the scriptures that I'm preaching about on today. Paul was asking the officers that had arrested him to give him an opportunity to speak unto them Jewish leaders. So they said, okay. So Paul found himself like on the, on the uh, 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 courtyard front steps. And he, he stood up and began to give the history of kind of what I just gave you. So we come to this point, Acts 22 and 6, and it says, and it came to pass, thank you Jesus, that as I made my journey, as I was coming down to Damascus about noon, suddenly there shone from heaven a great light round and about me, and I fell into the ground and heard a voice saying unto me, Saul, Saul, what persecutest thou me? Now, you see how Jesus, how he identified himself with the church. He said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Now, who was Saul persecuting? Saul was persecuting the people that believed in Jesus. He was persecuting the Christians. So you see how Jesus how, how, how he identified, in other words, you was hurting Jesus' people, so Jesus said that you're hurting me. Yeah. You're persecuting me. You're persecuting the church, so you persecuted me. Because Jesus, he is the church. Amen. First Corinthians says in 12, and 12, for as the body is one and had many members, and all the members of that one body being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into the body. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and having been made to drink of the same spirit. Hallelujah. How do you get into the body? That one body. It says you must be baptized into the body. And that body that we're talking about is the body of Jesus Christ. You, Hallelujah. You got to be baptized into that body. Baptized in Jesus' name and filled with the Holy Ghost. And then you can become part of the body of Christ. And it goes on to say, for the body is not one member, but many. So of all of us, the body of Christ. Then we drop down to verse 18 and it says, but now God has set the members, every one of them in the body as it has pleased him. Hallelujah. He set you where he wants you to be. Remember that. Hallelujah. It's not your choice. You should pray unto God and he'll tell you where you should be. But now are they many members, yet one body. This is verse 20 in Corinthians. We're going to drop down to 27. It says, now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. We are, you know what? We're like cells in the body, in our body. We're kind of like cells in God's body. It's many, many, many of us. It's many cells in your body. And Christ can feel when one of us are persecuted. He can feel that thing. And he responds too if you're in the body. 
Hallelujah. He's like the white blood cells that we have. Hallelujah. When, when an infection or something get in our body, them white blood cells will run to it and, and attack it and make it go away. Hallelujah. Christ is the same way. Matter of fact, if, if you if you if you if they become a big infection, the white cells they increase by themselves. They'll increase and, and they become multiply and they get big and, and, and they fight off that enemy. Jesus do the same. When you begin to pray unto God, Jesus, he don't get bigger, but he get bigger in you. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. To fight off that persecution, that infection of sin, yes. hallelujah, that's trying to kill you. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Acts 22 and 8. We go back there. It goes on to say, and I answered, who art thou, Lord? And he said unto me, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom thou persecutest. And they that were with me saw indeed the light and were afraid, but they heard not the voice of him that spake to me. Hallelujah. You know that they were with him indeed and saw the light, but they were not blinded. Hallelujah. As Paul was. They was with Paul, saw the light, but they wasn't blind. Why? Hallelujah. First John and one says, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him and without him was not anything made. Hallelujah, that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. The darkness didn't understand it. Hallelujah. John 8 and 12 says, Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Darkness is your soul without Jesus. That's darkness. Jesus has not revealed himself unto you. Hallelujah. So you're walking in darkness. You can't comprehend it. You can't, you can see the light, but you don't see the light. Hallelujah. You don't comprehend the light that you see. They couldn't understand what it was that they were seeing. The light. Many people on earth, hallelujah, have seen Jesus walking around, but they didn't know that he was the light of life. It's still the same today. People are walking around and they don't know that Jesus is the light of of life. Hallelujah. Now verse 22 and 9 goes on to say, and they that were with me indeed, uh, they were with me saw indeed the light and was afraid. But they heard not the voice of him that spake to me. Hallelujah. Indeed they seen the light and but they was afraid. You know how when you read in the Bible how when the people when the hallelujah when the demons see Jesus, what they always do? They always get afraid. Like, like, don't cast me out here over here and don't do this to me. And they all get afraid. They get afraid of Jesus. Hallelujah. That's the way people are. Hallelujah. Now they're afraid. Of Jesus. You know why? Because Jesus is the light. And you know what does light do? Light exposes. Hallelujah. So that, that's why they run from Jesus. Because Jesus is the light. And the light will expose you. Hallelujah. That's why they're afraid. Because the light, it, it, it exposes. It brings the truthness out. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, 
Hallelujah. It goes on to say, but they heard not the voice of him that spake to me. When you read over in Acts 9, the original account of what Paul is recounting here about Paul's conversion in 9 and 7 it says, and the men which journeyed with Paul, hallelujah, with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. So we got two accounts by the same person, and it says two different things. It says that in, 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 in 22 and 9, it says that the men did not hear the voice of him that spake. In verse 9, Acts 9, verse 7, the same account, the same thing that went on, but telling by the same man, Paul, he, he's the same one telling the story. He says, and the men journeying with him stood speechless, hearing a voice, but seeing no man. So in one place they heard him, and in another place they didn't. Now, there's no controversy in the word of God, and there's no confusion. Amen. Hallelujah. Let us assure you of that. Hallelujah. No confusion in the word of God. The men with Saul heard something, but they just couldn't understand or receive it. Just like they, hallelujah, like they seen the light, but they couldn't comprehend it. Hallelujah. The Bible says in Matthew 13 and 13, Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they see, see because they seeing, see not. And hearing, they hear not. Neither do they understand. Jesus. They see the light, but didn't see Jesus. The light. <laughs> the light. Jesus. The light. And they heard the voice, but didn't hear Jesus. The word which came down from heaven. Jesus. Why is this so? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus said many times in the scriptures that he that has an ear, let him hear what the spirit says unto the church. Then he also said, who has an ear to hear, let him hear. Jesus is not talking about whether you have a physical ear, hallelujah, hanging off the side of your head, hallelujah, because everybody pretty much got one of those. A physical ear hanging off the side of your head. Jesus is talking about an inner ear. A matter of fact, it's an inner spiritual ear that leads to your heart and your soul hearing things. Hallelujah. Everybody don't have this inner ear. Hallelujah. Matthew 13, it says uh, Jesus was, uh, he was telling a story, hallelujah, about a sower sowing some seeds and the sower sowed the seeds and, and he told the whole parable about it and then after he got done with the parable hallelujah the disciples want to know Jesus what you're talking about they want to know why you were speaking in parables hallelujah and we pick up at verse 13 and 9 it says Matthew verse 13 and 9 who has an ear to hear let him hear and the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou in parables? He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But not to them it is not given. Hallelujah. For whosoever has, to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever have not, from him it shall be taken away even what he has. Therefore speak I unto them in parables because they see, seeing, see not, and hearing, they hear not, neither do they understand. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which said, by hearing ye shall hear, and ye shall not understand. And seeing ye shall see, and not shall and shall not perceive. Hallelujah. If you can hear me and understand what I am saying unto you today, 
it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Now what you do with it, that's a whole nother message. That which you hear. Amen. Now, if you can hear me and understand the things that I'm saying to you, and if you can see, hallelujah, how we are moving through the scriptures, if you can see Jesus in the scriptures that we're going through today, that I'm covering, then it has been given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Now what you're going to do with it? Hallelujah. Now, unfortunately, there are some people, somebody probably sitting right beside you, hallelujah, that don't understand a thing that I'm saying. It has not been given unto them to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. It's somebody that's sitting right beside you on the couch or right beside you at the kitchen table don't understand a thing that I'm saying. The word is not opening up to them. Hallelujah. It has not been given unto them to know the kingdom of God or the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Verse 15 goes on to say, listen up. For this people People's heart is white gross. Hallelujah. This people's heart is white gross. Now the word gross means, uh, when you talk about gross, especially of doing wrong. That's what it, especially in doing wrong. Very obvious, unacceptable behavior, blunt, to be out front sinning. Blunt sinning. Hallelujah. In other words, sinning in your face, you know, blunt in your face. And the scripture goes on and says, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. Least at any time they should see their eyes, they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and should understand with the heart, and should shall be converted, and I shall heal them. Jesus is saying in the last part of that scripture, if anybody would believe me and repent in their heart, they shall be converted. In other words, what he'll do, that conversion that he's talking about, he'll, he'll turn that darkness of eternal death to light and eternal life. He'll move, you'll move from serving Satan to serving God. Hallelujah. You'll move from living in the sin to living in the righteousness. He'll heal you from having a black look, non-spiritual ear. He'll open your ear so that you can hear the spiritual things of God. He'll open your spiritual eye so that you can see, hallelujah, the spiritual things of God. He'll change that hardened heart. Hallelujah to a heart of understanding so that you can understand the things that you're seeing and hearing. The opening of your eyes and the opening of your ears and the changing of your heart is done through repentance. Hallelujah. God told Israel in Jeremiah 6 and 10, he said, to whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear. Behold, their ear is uncircumcised and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. In other words, it's foolishness to them when they hear it. It's foolishness. They don't mean nothing. Hallelujah. They have no delight in it. They care nothing about the righteousness of God. They care nothing about doing right. Care nothing about walking upright. Doing the things which are right. So, how can you have an uncircumcised ear? Because there's no foreskin on the ear. Hallelujah. 
There's no foreskin to remove on the ear. It's on a male reproductive part that you remove the foreskin. Hallelujah. There's nothing there. No, no extra skin. To circumcise is to remove flesh. But it's not the flesh or the foreskin that God is wanting you to cut away from your ear. It's the flesh of carnality. Jesus. It's the carnality, the flesh. What he's saying is cut away that fleshly thoughts that you have. That block everything that Jesus is trying to do for you. Hallelujah. Cut away that fleshly behavior that you do. Hallelujah. Cut away that fleshly way that you talk. The inappropriate words. Inappropriate conversation. Hallelujah. That causes Jesus to be blocked out of your life. Cut away that carnality way that you walk. That cardinal way. Hallelujah. That you walk. And walk in righteousness. Cut it away. That's the foreskin that he's talking about. Hallelujah. Cut it away. These are the things that block you from seeing, hearing, and receiving Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. These things are always, they're, 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 you can remove these things, in other words, by, by repentance. Hallelujah. If you repent, turn away from those things, then you, you can hear from Jesus. You can see Jesus, and he will change your heart. Hallelujah. Verse 16 goes on to say, But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. He's talking to the disciples, remember? He's telling them, blessed are you. So I'm telling you, those that are in here, those that are watching, blessed are you who hears me who can understand me, who can see Jesus in what I'm talking about. Jesus. Blessed are you. Now back to Acts 22 and 10. Paul continues to tell this story. Verse 10 says, And I said, What shall I do, Lord? And the Lord said unto me, Arise and go into Damascus, and there it shall be told thee all things which are appointed to thee to do. And when I couldn't, when I could not see the glory of the light being led by the hand of the men that was with me, I came into Damascus. And one, an Ananias, a devout man according to the law, having a good report of all the Jews which dwelt there, came unto me and stood and said unto me, Brother Saul, receive thy sight. And the same hour I looked upon him. And he said, The, the God of our fathers hath chosen thee. Hallelujah, have chosen thee that thou shouldest know his will and see that just one. Who is that just one? Jesus, Jesus is that just one. And the will of God is for you just to walk upright in his word and shouldest hear the voice of his mouth. Thank you. Blessed are you that can hear the voice of God. For thou shalt be his witness unto all men or what thou hast seen and heard. So when you really get down to it, this is what Jesus is really talking about. When you, This is what you should be doing. In other words, when you get saved and everything, you should be going out witnessing. Hallelujah. End result. And 16 says, And now, why tearest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, now that you have heard from Jesus and have seen him in the scriptures, why tarries that? Arise, get up, hallelujah, and do something. Let me tell you what that something is. Be baptized. Wash away your sins. Calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, hallelujah. Calling on the name of the Lord. And in case you don't know what the name of the Lord is, it is Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. The mystery of the kingdom of God is given to those with a repentant heart. For those of you who can't hear me right now, just say, I believe in Jesus Christ. Those of you that, that, that it, this is what I'm talking about, it's not making any sense to you. Hallelujah. Tell Jesus that you believe in him. Tell Jesus, I have sinned 
and I need you, Lord, to forgive me of my sins. Tell the Lord Jesus that you repent of your sins and he, he will begin to cut away them uncircumcised sounds of sin that is blocking your ear and remove that blindness of those scales that's blocking your eyes so you can't see. Hallelujah. The beauty of him in his holiness. And he will change that hardened heart. Hallelujah. That you will receive him in the fullness of joy. Why tarries thou? Why are you going to wait? Why wait? Why tarries thou? What are you waiting on? Hallelujah. Don't wait on the person sitting beside you. Hallelujah. Remember, they probably deaf and blind and can't hear a thing that I'm saying. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. They have a hardened heart. Now to tarry is to delay. Hallelujah. To leap slowly or, or, or to stop temporarily and be reluctant. And the root word of that is tar. Tarry. Tar. And you know what tar is? It's that black stuff that they use to, for sticking it. You put it somewhere, it don't move. Don't be tar. Don't, don't tarry. Hallelujah. Get up and do something. Jeremiah 17, 23 says, But they obey not, neither incline their ear, but made their neck stiff, that they may not hear nor receive instructions. They made their neck stiff, stiff. What people, when they make their neck stiff, that pride be setting in. Remember, I, I preached on last week about guidance and instruction. So, you know, we'll be like Paul. Paul. God gave Paul a set of instructions. He told him to go to Damascus and Ananias, he didn't see Ananias. Ananias came and laid hands on him and he received the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, by calling on the name of the Jesus, by calling on the name of Jesus, he received the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. By calling on the name of Jesus. Now, why do you call on the name of Jesus? Because neither is there salvation in any other name, for there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. If you can hear me today, like Paul heard Jesus on the road to Damascus, listen to the instructions that I have. On the day of Pentecost, Peter preached a message. Hallelujah. And the people's hearts were pricked, like Paul's heart was pricked. Hallelujah. And then they said, what must I do? Like Paul asked, what must I do? Where should I go? And the Lord gave him instruction. Hallelujah. I'm giving you a set of instruction on today. Acts 2 and 38 says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, for the remission of your sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. That is the instructions. Why tarry? Hallelujah. Do not tarry. Don't hold back. The last thing I want to say is this. 1 Kings 18 and 21. It says, And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long halt ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, in other words, if Jesus, follow him. Follow him. If he be God, follow him. If Jesus is God, follow him. But if Balaam, hallelujah, but if Balaam, in other words, which is Satan, which is the devil, which one are you going to follow? Make a decision. If be Balaam, then follow him. And then it says, and the people answer him not a word. Don't be like the people. And answer not a word. Answer by calling on the name of Jesus. And why tarry doing it? You need salvation. You need God. Why tarry? Hallelujah. Repent so your ears can be open and your eyes can be open so that you may see. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If everybody would stand for me, please.
Now, if you would like prayer, if you want to come down to the altar, we will dress out and, and uh, hallelujah, pray with you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. If you're watching, hallelujah, by YouTube or Facebook and you would like prayer, hallelujah, you can call us at 706-257-3022. Or you can go to our website and fill out, hallelujah, a prayer request at www.words with a s of life 20.org dot org hallelujah thank you jesus and also if this uh word has blessed you and you want to be a blessing unto us you can also go to our website at www.wordsoflife20.org.org and just press on the online giving button and there's many different ways to give hallelujah let us pray Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you on this day. We praise you and we magnify you and we exalt thee. Father, touch the hearts of the people. Touch the ears, God. Remove right now, God, hallelujah, that uncircumcised ear, God. Those scales, God, that's blocking their eyes that people may hear, that people may see you and God don't allow them to tarry why tarry thee move forward call fill out the prayer request move forward hallelujah and request Jesus to be in your life hallelujah don't tarry that's what the devil wants you to do he wants you to hold on to whatever it is that's separating you from God. Don't tarry. Move forward. It's your time. If you hear me, you called. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, the mystery of the kingdom has been given unto you. Move out. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. And if you don't hear me, repent. In the name of Jesus, let God know, hallelujah, that you're sorry of your sin. And he will open those things up to you. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank you, Lord.